this. I am ready to recover and release the power of signs, wonders, and miracles. Now, that's the power of it. Not just that we will see the signs, but the power of it. He wants to release it. Look at somebody next to you and say, some of that's in you. And this is what the Lord said this week to me, to say to us, don't let dignity stop your miracle. See, we pray for each other. You got, you've got to understand. I went through, when I was reading all the Gospels yesterday and last night, the Lord did 23 distinct recorded miracles and healings to cause us to have understanding. And most of those people had to just go slap dab crazy to enter into the faith level that they needed to enter into. And we're going to be talking about some of that. But something happened this week. Shatice came in, and we were, she has been going through some things. And she came in, and I said, well, we're going to pray for you right now. Chad was in my office. Brian was in my office. You know, we pray for people. Look at somebody and say, I hope he prays in faith. Well, I can tell if I'm praying the prayer of faith. And so she was really struggling. So I said, "You lay down on that carpet over there, on that rug in my office. Thank Robert. Thank God that Robert and Penny and her team keep it all clean. And I said, lay down over there, and Brian's going to get your feet, and Chad's going to get your arms. And we're going to command your body to straighten out. Well, while we're doing it, the Orkin man walks in. And poor Shatice is laid out on the floor. There's two guys over pulling on her. <laughs> he said, I'm the orchid man. I'm here for the pest. I said, we praying over people in here. We ain't doing nothing to her, but praying over her. She is desperate. And let me tell you something. He found lots of joy to enter in, and all of a sudden, that atmosphere in that whole room shifted. Now, you're going to have to just do what you need to do and not worry about who's wondering what you're doing. I love it. Now, so I asked the Lord something over the weekend. I said, why is it that we struggle so in the church, in the church? Everybody look at somebody and say, in the church. With healing and miracles. Well, first of all, church is only, well, here it's two hours. Some places it's 49 minutes, so if you're going to get one, you're going to have to rush it up. That's how simple that is. You can say, I, I came here, and they're going to say, well, this thing shuts down in 49 minutes, and you're going to say, well, hopefully something will happen. But this is what the Lord began to show me. Many times our pride trumps our desperation. Just like that. Some of you, here's a whole stack of money. Pam and I weren't going to touch it 
until you had an opportunity to touch it first. But if you sit out there and you don't have money to get, get home, you need to walk. Because here was a big stack you could come up and get some. If you say, well, I really wish I had a hamburger, and you didn't come up here and get, well, hamburger is now $10 at least, $10, then something's wrong with you. Your, your pride and self-centeredness can trump your desperation. You need to say, I'm going to play the desperation card. Here's another reason. We have lots of options for healing in our culture and society. And usually, the Lord isn't the first one we go to. So don't fool yourself. I mean... You can pray about it, and you're already thinking about what's the doctor's number. Now, I'm for doctors a hundredfold, but not before the Lord. You're going to have to hear him tell you, go to the doctor. I have to some people, you, you've got to get some sort of drug to help you. I've done many things like that, and I've said, I'm taking you to the doctor. But, there, but not until the Lord is sought first. You have to just ask him about what he's doing in your body. Third thing I saw is, We are called to pray in Jesus' name. See, Jesus didn't have to pray in Jesus' name. He was Jesus. So, we have to pray in Jesus' name, and perhaps we don't really know his name. And then here's the real big one. Look at somebody and say, Jesus is in you. Now, uh, this is real key for us in this area of healing and miracles. And you've got to come to some conclusion of how you're going to allow him to do what he did in his physical body. Now, you cork him up, and he's going to stay corked. You have to see, if you belong to him, that he is living inside of you, and there's some way you got to get him loose. All right? And then here's something else. You... We have to be, there's an anointing for healing. So some way, we got to work with this anointing. I love one, several times in the Word of God, Jesus was present to heal. And that's in the book of Acts. So, you have to learn how to work with the anointing in you to align with his presence. That is so key. And here's something else that we find all the way through the word of God. Healing's a process. Sometimes it's got lots of steps to it. Let's take the woman with the issue of blood. Twelve years that process was going on. See, you're in a process of something, and you've got to you got to work through that process. She had to get past being a woman during those twelve years to get healed, because they weren't allowed to just run out into where all the men were and the priests. She had to work 
past being, having this issue of blood because she was destined to stay in her house as part of the punishment of the sickness and the result of the sickness. She had, the word of God says she spent, she had money. But after 12 years, she had spent all that money on doctors. So, what happened was, this process came to an end. And she said, I ain't got nowhere to go except out. I'm going to go past those religious people. I'm going to go past all those people prejudiced over women. I'm going to go past the doctor because he hadn't been able to do anything. And, and she'd been going to him for 12 years. I'm going to get past him. And then I'm going to get past my bank account. And the only thing that I know that is going on here is that man that people are talking about and I'm going to press past all of them and touch him some way. And if I can touch him, he can touch me. That woman was desperate. And she had lost her dignity so she could get... so she. Healing and salvation are synonymous. Some of you, that sickness you're going through is part of your salvation. When you overcome it, you are saved. Whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. All you got to do is get to a place where you get loud enough... And you don't care who hears you. Come on. And you don't care who sees you. And you don't care what they think about you because you're going to press on and touch the one that can touch you. Is there desperate people in the house? Hallelujah. Let them hear it. Let them hear it. Let them hear it. 